Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Modern Dog Training. My name is Drayton Michaels. I'm a dog trainer behavior technician. Let's talk about emergency recall and how many times it gets ruined and how to repair it. Unfortunately, people use their emergency recall cue in a casual way, or they end the dog's fun and freedom. And that's something that I recommend to people all the time. Do not use your recall to end the dog's fun and freedom. Don't do it. It's going to erode the cue, whether you're in the backyard or you're at the dog beach or you're at your friend's house and you call your dog and you end their fun and freedom at the end of that recall, dogs are gonna record that. Remember, dogs work on predictive value. And if the predictive value of dog name, come, is my fun is over, I get leashed up, I get brought in the house, if your dog gets loose or there's an emergency in the house even and you go to use your recall, your dog may not come over to you. Remember, many times when dogs get loose and they're running around, they're having a good time. It's us that's nervous and scared and need to get the dog back. So what you want from your recall is expediency and no hesitation. So the number one way to keep your recall nice and strong is don't use it in casual settings and don't use it to end the dog's fun and freedom. The next way to keep your recall strong is to practice it. And it works like this. Dog name, recall word, cheer them on. Don't be lazy, don't quit. Get happy, get excited. When they come over to you, you grab their harness or collar, you mark yes, and you issue high value food, meat, something that is gonna blow their mind. And then let them go back to whatever they were doing when you're practicing this. You're obviously not going to let them go when you get them in an emergency, but for practice sake, when you let them go back to what they're doing, you get the second level of reinforcement. The first level is high value food, and the second is back to freedom. Remember, you're also conditioning that abrupt grab. When you reach really quick for your dog, that's unlike any other reach you're gonna do in casual settings, and many dogs shy away and bop around, and again, if you don't have your dog, you don't have a recall. I highly recommend that if you're repairing your recall or if you're watching this and you've just got a new dog and you have a fenced-in area that you can get to every single day, do it three times a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at night. Do not assembly line your recall. Meaning, don't do five recalls in three minutes. That's not a good read. The dog gets really good at it after a couple of times. You wanna do this off the cuff as a surprise as it would be if it was an emergency. That's how your dog is going to learn this cue best. The best way to end your dog's fun and freedom is to do it casually with no big cue or predictor. Meaning, you just go up to your dog, say, hey buddy, what's going on? Give them a treat, hook them up to the leash, or take their gear, a collar, or a harness, and bring them in the house. Pay them when they get in the house. But don't give them a big cue that, hey, your fun and freedom is over, because that will get recorded in their long-term memory, and if they get loose or there's an emergency and you need them to run over to you quickly, they may not do it. And that's the number one way people erode their recall is ending the dog's fun and freedom. Remember, protect your dog's emergency recall cue and practice it a couple of times a week for life once you get it repaired or after you've done it three times a day for three months and you should have a nice strong recall for your dog. Thanks for watching Modern Dog Training. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share and pass this information on to somebody who might need it. Thanks for watching and remember, train force free.